Hi, I'm Jo, the Community Engagement Manager from Violetta Finance, and I'm here on the online Prosperity Show. Today, we're talking about strategies to market your business and make sure that you are reaching your best ideal customer. We're going to cover clarity, we're going to cover community engagement, and also how to navigate the sometimes rocky road of working with your significant other. Another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I brought you Joe, the marketing specialist at Violetta Finance. Joe, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. I do understand and I do know you have a lot of value to offer us today. And at the end of the day, some people might not understand, you know, how it all happens behind the scenes of a mortgage brokery. They just see um, you know, things being put out there, but they don't understand the whole community aspect, um, you know, that goes behind the scenes. So this is what Joe actually does. And if you're watching this video right now, you might, uh, you know, take a nugget or two um, with regards to how to actually connect with your audience while you're actually serving them in a way that will help them do business with you later. Because as we all understand, People do business with those they know, like, and trust. Now, at Violetta Finance, their service is designed um, basically with families and busy parents in mind, and their office is pretty much child-friendly, and also it says prem-friendly. They also do a program called Global Money Week that they actually bring in kids to a radio station where they can actually uh, teach them to be financially savvy and teach them also that pocket money is not just buying candy and all, or just buying um, you know, sweets at the, at the cafeteria at school. Now, Jo has a lot of work that she's been doing behind the scenes that she can't wait to let us know what's been up. Jo, thank you so much for, um, you know, your time on the show today. Tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your position at Violetta Finance and what it is that you actually do to help other people have a happier existence. Okay, well, uh, our business, Violetta Finance, we're a mortgage brokerage. And our team consists of, uh, it's quite unusual actually, it's my husband and I. So we're a husband and wife team and we are still happily married, believe it, <laughs> believe it or not. So in our, in our business, Carl, my husband, he is the mortgage broker. So he's the one that meets with clients, assesses their needs, um, puts their loans together and advocates for them with the banks and submits their loans to the banks. So he really has that, that customer contact. Uh, whereas my role is uh, behind the scenes, but also in front of the camera. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So I manage our brand communications, which means I do all of our social media work, I um, organise our community engagement activities, I uh, write our blogs, and um, Carl and I also do a weekly video each as well, which um, talks about money and finances, so it's quite educational. So that's how our business is structured. We are definitely very um, micro, but we're lean and efficient. Absolutely. You just raised something that a lot of people have been trying to put together in their business, which is balancing between, um, you know, family or working with your spouse and yeah. also, you know, running a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. Walk us through your day to day activity when, you know, you, you, you're waking up next to your husband and you're going to bed to bed and spending the rest of the day with them and then, you know, going back to bed 24 seven. <laughs> well, I think uh, what makes it work for us is that we both have two very distinct uh, areas of the business that we work on. Now uh, we're parents. We have a young boy who's three and our eldest is 16. Uh, so we definitely fall into the busy parent category. Uh, so we've designed our business around our lifestyle so that it works in with our family. My husband works in the office 
Uh, so that's just around the corner from my house. And I actually work from home. So this is my lounge room that I'm sitting in uh, right now. And because I don't meet with clients, I have the ability to work from home and be there for the kids. But as I was saying, what makes uh, a partnership work business-wise is that he works on the finance side of things, which is his area of expertise. And I work in the marketing, brand, communication side of things, which is my areas of area of expertise. And we don't we 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 cross over, but we're still very clear on what what our boundaries are, if that makes sense. And we trust each other that we we will work in our area of of genius or expertise. We won't. I don't tell him how to write loans. And um, he might offer a few suggestions or thoughts around marketing, but really the, um, the buck stops with me as far as that side goes, and that works. If we were both working on the marketing together, I think we would butt heads. And if we were both, both had an area of expertise around writing loans, I think we would, we, we would butt heads. We're, we're quite different, so that works. Absolutely. I actually respect that. Maybe you should write a book regarding that because I do know a lot of um, couples that are really trying to make it work, first of all, yeah. just personally, and then all, also working together in business and it hasn't really worked out well. So kudos to you for having you know done it well there. <laughs> no, no, Joe, your husband is an expert in whatever yeah. he's doing. And we do find that a lot of experts stick to their lane okay yes. and he's lucky to have you running you know his marketing what mm. would what would be his situation right now had he not gotten you as communication specialist and had he not gotten you as strategies to actually market his business so he can reach and help those families and small business owners to actually achieve you know their home ownership and financial financial dreams oh we talk about this often actually <laughs> <laughs> Where he would be without me. <laughs> uh, look, he he does have his areas area of expertise. He's a he's a brilliant uh, at customer service as well. So not only does he know the numbers, but his customer service skills and just his interpersonal skills are beyond what what I've seen pretty much anywhere else. They're they're you know really quite excellent. Uh, but it was funny when we started the business. Uh, I was pregnant and I wasn't um, really very involved. And I said to him, you need to start a Facebook page. And he didn't believe me, but I sort of pushed and pushed and he started a Facebook page. And uh, his mentor actually saw the Facebook page and said to me, you can't, you can't let him. <laughs> you can't let him loose on the Facebook page because he just, he, it wasn't his area of expertise. So um, I, I stepped in and... Facebook, for example, has been a really strong generator of leads for us and I'm, I don't think that we would have the amount of leads that we're getting from social media if I didn't have a hand in it. Uh, but also the community engagement activities that we've um, set up and we've taken part in have led to uh, strategic partnerships and, and that sort of thing that have been really, really great to help, for helping our business grow. So I think um, we would be... As far as this, this business goes, we would be lost without each other. Each of us have equal, equal value. The business can't happen without the other. Absolutely, because mm. that's really what I wanted you to stress out, that um, a lot of you know, uh, skilled professionals just think their job is good enough um, yeah. without bringing it out to the audiences. So for you to actually then create those partnerships that you're talking about there, Joe, and for you to actually bring in that um, audience through, um, you know, Facebook and all the other social media platforms. What what is it that you actually are doing um, specifically to 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 garner that attention for the business? I think uh, what was a real game changer for us as far as uh, bringing in a, a loyal and engaged audience that converts. Uh, two things. One was getting really, really clear on who we're serving and who we're, who we're talking to. I know that a lot of small businesses in particular are a bit frightened of niching. Uh, and by that, I mean by focusing on a specific target market. 
Uh, but I believe if you try to be, and it's an old saying, if you try to be everything to everyone, you'll be, I think it's something like you'll be nothing to you no one. Yeah, yeah exactly. something like that. So we got really, really clear on who we're, who we're serving and who we're communicating to. And that became a really strong point of difference for us. So our target market are people just like us. They're busy, and like you, busy parents with young children. Uh, for me, I remember when I, my youngest Marcus was just a little baby and I was trying to, I was trying to negotiate a better deal on one of our utilities actually. And I was on the phone and he was climbing all over me and pulling my hair and, and just doing all sorts of wacky things. And um, I finally got to the, the hard negotiation stage of, um, of, of uh, this phone call. I was trying to close the deal and get a cheaper rate on our utilities. And um, he needed an urgent, disastrous nappy change. So here I am like playing hardball with someone on the phone while well, I'm trying to change a nappy. Uh, and I think back to when I was a kid and my mum used to take us to the bank all the time. Like it felt like we were going every day and she had a checkbook at that time. No one has checkbooks these days. Well, not many people have checkbooks these days. And we would be so bored in the bank. And one day my brother actually got his head stuck in between these bars in the bank and took us hours to get him out. And I reflected on those experiences and I thought there's got to be a different way. Like there's no one in the finance sector in particular who is addressing this problem, who's addressing this need, who is um, who has created a service tailored to busy parents uh, so that they can access it easily. And that's why we decided we're going to communicate to busy parents and we're going to make sure we have a baby and child, not just proof, but friendly office. We don't insist that people talk to us on the phone. They can just message us through Facebook if they want or text message. We just try to make things as easy as possible. Carl will come to people's houses after hours. He doesn't care if your kids are screaming and there's toys all over the floor. Um, we've designed our service specifically for busy parents. And as soon as we became really clear on who our service was for and um, who we were communicating to, our business just exploded. Uh, and the second thing for us that's been a real game changer is video. So we, um, I do a Facebook Live once a week, Carl does an Ask Carl video once a week as well. And what that's meant for us is that when people come to our office, they already feel like they know us. They aren't rate shopping, they aren't going around shopping around lots of different brokers. They've made a decision, a firm decision, that they want to work with Carl and I. So those have been the two game changers. One, being really clear on who our target is and getting quite narrow on that. And two, video. Absolutely, you should claim a raise as soon as we finish this video. <laughs> Because at the end of the day, people are coming to get, um, people are coming to the internet to get information. And if yeah. you're the person that's providing them with that information, they get to know, like, and trust you. And we yes. all know that people do business with those they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. As you can, you know, tell Joe, finances is, is a hard um, thing to deal mm. with money it's emotion and it's livelihood of people you know what i mean so not so many people are comfortable talking about that let alone when their kids are running around so if you've made it so comfortable for them to then deal with somebody who knows who they are i think you're yeah. killing it on the market right there and um the fact that you actually do help families and small business owners to achieve their home ownership and finance dreams, um, you know, by actually getting them a fair deal on their home loans and car loans. Those are two things that people just say, you know what, just give me what you have and let me walk out of here because they yeah. don't want to be talking uh, too much about yeah. those things. So you, you just you guys sort are, it out for me. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and you mentioned small business owners and, um, uh, so uh, we usually first approach by mums, so the, the mum in the, the family. And I was looking into some stats 
And one of the fastest growing groups of people that are starting small businesses in Australia are our mums. So a lot of our clients are also their mums, their parents, and their small business owners. So we make um, sure that we have a really robust understanding of what their needs are as well. Absolutely. So <clears throat> earlier on, Joe, you touched on clarity. Obviously, um, with clarity, every task that you will be taking on becomes manageable, you know, and if you're going to be driving. You've noticed that your windscreen is bigger than your rear view mirror. So if you're seeing where you're going, it makes it a whole lot easier, you know, for you to tackle who your exact audience um, actually is. Now, do you find that a lot of small businesses lack clarity as to who their target audience is? And is that what might be crippling them from growing or from actually being doing and having a business that's profitable and enjoyable? I think so. Um, by the way, I really like that windscreen analogy. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I, I meet a lot of small business owners uh, because you know I attend a net networking events and that sort of thing, and particularly mortgage brokers I've noticed as well. Uh, they are not clear on who they're, they're serving. You ask them, who, you know, who is your... What, who, who, who do you serve? Who's your target market? And they say, everyone. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's lovely, but unless you have a massive corporation's budget, I don't think that you can effectively communicate to everyone. You want your prospects and your clients to say that when they read an email from you or a blog post, that they feel like you're, you're speaking directly to them and you're, you're reading their, their mind in, in a way. So... I think clarity is really important, but I, I don't think a lot of businesses are clear, have a lot of clarity. I also noticed in discussions with small business owners, when you ask them what their point of difference is, um, particularly I've noticed with mortgage brokers, they're not clear on what their, their point of difference is. Most mortgage brokers that I speak to will say, we have a panel of this many lenders and we provide excellent customer service and we're honest. And it's like, well, those are all critical, but they're the basics. They're the basics just to have skin in the game. Uh, if you don't have those things, then you, you don't deserve to be operating. But what makes you different? And not many businesses can answer that. Absolutely. And, and also, you know, customers wouldn't really care where or what you're doing behind the scenes. They yeah. just care what's in it for them. And yeah. um, I think you're doing that with the kids, the global um, money week, it, the global money week. Can you just yeah. walk us through that one as well there? Yeah, sure. So global money week is, it's a global initiative. So it happens all, all over the world uh, in March every year. This year it's uh, running from March 12 until March 18. And every country has a different way that they celebrate Global Money Week. It's a global money celebration for kids. And the aim is to help build awareness around the importance of financial literacy and to help kids build their financial literacy and to help show people that learning about money and finances doesn't have to be, you know, boring <laughs> and nerdy. It's actually exciting and it's really, it, it's really fun. Uh, so last year to celebrate Global Money Week, uh, Carl went round to local primary schools and delivered money friend, uh, kid friendly money talks. Uh, we also recorded a really cute video where kids came into our office and they asked Carl money related questions. And there were some, you know, interesting questions about, um, you know, how they should save and spend their pocket money. Carl was also put on the spot. <laughs> A couple of times, someone, one of the kids asked him about um, pay parity for different genders when it comes to pocket money, and he was a little bit thrown. But I thought he fielded the question, fielded the question quite well. Uh, we we're also interviewed by a local blogger, a twelve-year-old boy who is a future property mogul. <laughs> uh, this year, we're doing something slightly different. Uh, I host a co-host a radio show on local radio every Thursday night and we're going to invite some kids to come in and question Carl live on air about uh, money and finance. So really fun opportunity for the kids and uh, just a great way to get them thinking about, about money. 
Absolutely. So if we have kids uh, or parents that are going to be in and around the Mornington Peninsula, how can people get a hold of you there to, to get their kids on the shore? Uh, you can email me, uh, jo, so J-O, at Violeta Finance, V-I-O-L-E-T-A finance.com.au if you're interested. And, uh, yeah, that's happening in March, so email me soon because I'm putting the list together. Numbers will be very limited because it's an hour and a half show, so we need to get get the kids through. Everyone will just have a couple of minutes each. But, yeah, really, a really, really great opportunity for, for kids. Absolutely. Well, Joe, you would understand that this is the beginning of the year, sort of. I mean, we only just... Um, closely getting to the end of the f- second month, but yes. some people are still right uh, knee deep in their new year resolutions, either as families or as businesses. And um, obviously with you guys working around finances, working around, mm. um, you know, families and, um, you know, just sorting people out throughout the year, what sort of advice can you give even to those small businesses that can benefit from the expertise that you now have um, you know, working within the business, knowing what actually works and what is not working. So if you've got any couple of pieces of advice that you can leave us with, you know, so that people can actually do have a happier existence after watching this video today. Okay. Well, I would like people to have a happier existence after watching this. So uh, some pieces of advice I would leave people with it, well, first of all, I actually think that February and March are the best time to set goals for the rest of the year because all the hype of the of, um, new year has passed and we can get a bit sensible now. Uh, one would be to know your numbers. So to go through all of your expenses and subscriptions, I mean lo- line by line for your business and look at where you can eliminate, uh, where you can cut any any fat, so to speak. Uh, so are there any unnecessary uh, expenses? I was listening to a podcast by Glenn Carlson from um, Dent, uh, the Dent podcast, and he did this same exercise and he identified that they were spending tens of thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars on macadamias. <laughs> cheer for their conferences who's like get rid of the macadamias uh i don't know if any any of your audience i know i'm certainly not spending that much money on nuts but there's definitely areas where you can cut the fat so yeah number one would be to really know your numbers and uh number two for business owners would be to really know your audience and get that that clarity and um, number three would be if you own a small business and you are looking at increasing cash flow, then go and speak to a mortgage broker and make sure, a finance broker, and make sure, you can speak to us if you want to, <laughs> but make sure that that finance broker is all, also has a really great relationship with an accountant because your finance broker and your accountant should be working very, very closely. Uh, so yeah, know your numbers, get clarity on who you're serving, and if you need um, to increase cash flow, maybe you've got unpaid invoices and you need to buy a new asset or something like that, speak to a finance broker who has a great relationship with an accountant. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. Well, Joe, I can't thank you enough for the level of expertise that you've dropped on this show today. And if you're watching this show you would appreciate and understand that a lot of businesses fail just because they, first of all, are not reaching out for help. And second of all, they're not really consolidating their cash flow and everything else that comes along with it. Now, thank you so much, Joe, for your time. And um, hopefully we'll get the kids coming around to Global Financial Week there. Sounds good. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Bye for now.